Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ahmed Mligi and today I'll be talking about the five things that I wish I knew about chemical engineering before I became one. But before we get going, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm a chemical engineer based in Edmonton, Alberta. I talk about my perspective on different things in life, including engineering. Number one, there's very little chemistry involved in chemical engineering. A lot of us get into chemical engineering school because we have a passion for math and chemistry. I hate to break it to you, but less than 10% of your classes are going to be chemistry focused. That is because chemistry is the study of reactions in a lab scale, while chemical engineering is the application of these reactions in a large production scale to make money and add value to society. So as a chemical engineer, we don't necessarily need to fully understand how the process works intrinsically from the chemistry side, because there is the chemists who are more familiar with the process, more familiar with the mechanics of the process. Our job is to make sure that it's optimized and it's running well in a production scale. Don't get me wrong, good fundamental chemistry knowledge allows us to do our job better, but it's not a must. And that's why you'll see a lot of mechanical engineers doing chemical engineering jobs in your career. And that's something that I've seen as a chemical engineer working in oil and gas. There's folks that have a background in mechanical engineering and they're just as good as a lot of us chemical engineers. Uh, there is a clear distinction between our ability to understand the chemistry a little bit better as chemical engineers because we got exposed to it a lot more than the other disciplines of engineering. Uh, but it doesn't mean that a mechanical engineer can't effectively be a process engineer if they choose to become one. Number two, most of the jobs for chemical engineers are based at a site, uh, so a chemical plant or a refinery setting, and a lot of these chemical plants and refineries are built in the middle of nowhere, unfortunately. And that's because companies are trying to be as close as possible to the raw material to minimize the cost of transportation, and they are trying to acquire cheap land to build the refineries or chemical plants. So if that's the case, you will be based in the middle of nowhere as well. There's options to fly in and fly out, and some uh, production engineers or process engineers are gonna be based at site. Uh, so you gotta get comfortable with living in, in a place that's typically isolated. Uh, and that's, that's hard, because it's hard work Monday to Friday, and you would be looking for, forward to activities in the evening or the weekend. And if you're based in the middle of nowhere, uh, sometimes there's very little activities to do. But don't worry, some sites are in very attractive locations, uh, just like over here in Edmonton, Alberta, a city with a million plus population. And I get to live in the city and I work in a refinery uh, that's two minutes away from my house. Uh, so th th there are some good attractive sites uh, so don't let that be a deterrent uh, but just know that the majority of sites are in the middle of nowhere and you have to be comfortable with the idea of heading uh, to those locations at least at the beginning in your career uh, to get the experiences that you're looking for to allow you to go into another opportunity or another more attractive city number three i wish i knew what a chemical engineering does I know it's surprising to a lot of people, but a lot of us go into chemical engineering not fully in knowing what does a chemical engineering do in their career. And that is because it's a very broad discipline of engineering. So take me for instance, as a uh, oil and gas process engineer, if you ask me that question, what do you do day in and day out? I'll give you a very different response than somebody that's working as a chemical engineer in Tesla in one of their battery production facilities. And they would give you a different response than somebody that works as a chemical engineer in a pharmaceutical company uh, where they produce uh, medicine and a small batch reactors. We all have very different experiences and that makes it hard for people to understand and especially people that are still in high school to understand what a chemical engineering would do. So even if I answer this question today, uh, it would be a biased response because I'm not going to give you the full picture of what a chemical engineer does in 2021 because there's chemical engineers everywhere. Uh, there's some in software, there's some in production, there's some in traditional manufacturing like I am. 
Uh, but it would be unfair for me and it would be a biased response if I tell you what I do today and tell you that's what a chemical engineer does. Because that's not true. If I, my response would be strictly what a chemical engineer does in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and that's very different than other industries. Don't get me wrong. Oil and gas still remains a big employer for chemical engineers uh, because ultimately hydrocarbon based energy is ubiquitous. It's what's fueling our world. You see it everywhere, gasoline, diesel, uh, but there is a big shift in energy nowadays. And I think more and more we're gonna start seeing other industries uh, employing uh, chemical engineers uh, at a much higher rate than oil and gas is. Number four, we do not operate the equipment. Let me tell you, that was a shocker to me. After learning so much about pumps, compressors, reactors, heat exchangers, I thought I'll get to operate them. I'll get to see how they behave when they're under my control, but that's not how it works. You have operators that operate the equipment in a chemical uh, plant or refinery setting. And then as engineers, we work closely with the operators uh, to better understand the process, optimize it, and troubleshoot it day in and day out. Uh, but we don't operate any of the equipment. Uh, and that was a surprise to me, so I'm just giving you the heads up. Uh, if you're very hands-on, don't worry though. We do uh, do a lot of work out in the field. Uh, we don't typically do labor work. Uh, usually there's folks for uh, almost everything in a chemical set, in a chemical setting or refinery setting. Uh, people that are specialized in the given discipline. Uh, so for instance, insulation, tracing, there's people for everything that they would, that would be their job. That's what they do. As chemical engineers, we get heavily involved in uh, inspection during a planned shutdown or a planned outage. Uh, we would go in, see how the equipment looks from the inside and work with the mechanical engineers uh, to devise a plan of how to get the equipment back into its sort of run conditions or back to where uh, we can optimize it even further. Usually when the work is done, we collaborate with the process operators, with a mechanical engineer and us as chemical engineers uh, to look at the equipment, make sure it's built and designed as we need it to, uh, so that it functions the way that we intend for it to function. It's a very complicated pieces of equipment and for them to all fit together nicely, uh, we need the expertise of different people. And as a chemical engineer, we work with so many different people to ensure the equipment is, is built right and operated correctly as well. Number five, a lot of chemical engineers work for big companies. Think about it, a lot of the chemical plants that we work at or refineries, they cost tens of billions of dollars to build. And to operate them annually, it can cost anywhere from a few hundred million dollars uh, to a few billion dollars to, to operate on an annual basis. You need to have a big company to be able to support such an operation and build such assets. Uh, so you would find a lot of jobs are posted by bigger companies that are in the stock market. And with that, uh, they are heavily influenced by how the economy is doing and how the stock market is doing as well. So for instance, if you look at oil and gas, if oil is doing well and it's selling at a high price, uh, you see a lot of the big companies are hiring. Uh, there's a lot of raises, morale is quite high, uh, but things are not going well and oil prices go down or plummet sometimes. Uh, you see there's higher freezes, there's potentially layoffs, uh, there's no raises, and morale is typically low. Uh, so it's a very cyclic uh, career in chemical engineering, especially if you're in traditional manufacturing, because manufacturing in general is cyclic, it goes up and down, uh, and the downs are pretty low and the highs are pretty high. Uh, so you gotta be aware of that as you embark on your uh, chemical engineering career, uh, if you choose to become a chemical engineer. Uh, it's an exciting career, don't get me wrong. I am so excited about the work that I do, uh, being in a production facility, although there's challenges, even if you are in an isolated location, uh, I'm lucky because I'm in Edmonton, uh, but don't let that deter you, the location, from working in a production site, because it's such a fulfilling work. Uh, you get to work with a lot of people on very complex problems, and the feedback loop is very quick. And by that I mean, if you decide to make a move on a chemical reactor temperature or a heat exchanger temperature, 
right away you'll see the output of what you just made. And if it works, it's one of the most satisfying feelings ever. If it doesn't work, it's not that satisfying, uh, but you know you're a step closer to the right answer uh, to get you into an optimized state. Uh, and for, in order to do that, most of the times, we don't have the answers as chemical engineers, but by working with so many different disciplines and so many different people that have so much knowledge, that's how we get the answers. So I highly encourage you to become a chemical engineer if you think this is something interesting to you, if you like the idea of working in a place that doesn't sleep at 24 seven, 365 days a year, uh, so if things go wrong, you're on call, somebody's calling you trying to uh, work with you to find a solution. To me, that's a very exciting uh, career. Uh, there's a lot of fun associated with that. Uh, reflecting back on my own career, uh, it's been approximately two and a half years that I'm working full time in oil and gas as a process engineer. Uh, let me tell you, these late night calls tend to be the most fun. Uh, it's the most challenging problems uh, that I, tr I work with the operators to try to uh, figure out what's the best path forward. Um, it's hard work, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's, it is rewarding for the reasons that we spoke about already. So please leave in the comment section below your thoughts about chemical engineering, some of the things that you wish you knew about chemical engineering if you are a chemical engineer now, and if you are a chemical engineering student, if you have any questions for me, please leave them below. I'll be more than happy to help out as much as I can. And before you go, if you think this video added value to you, hit the thumbs up button uh, for me and check out my previous video, Improv and Engineering. I talk about how improv made me a better engineer and how it might be useful for you as well. Uh, so thank you all for being here and I'll see you in the next video.